Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to use layers in Photoshop and understand a little bit about the layers panel window. I've started an exercise here where I've created an A4 piece of paper as my background and that came up as a background layer which is locked. Any picture that you open up in Photoshop automatically is called background and is also a locked layer. What I've done then is I've dragged four images across onto this A4 piece of paper and whenever you drag an image across Photoshop automatically creates a layer for it. So think of layers as bits of paper that are just stacked up on top of each other. So my background layer, the white piece of paper, is sitting right at the bottom and then I have another four piece of papers overlaid on top of that. So I'm just going to show you the process what I did. I double clicked anywhere in the grey here and then I just went and opened up one of my images. So I'm just going to go and find another one for the moment. So I'm just going to open up this one here. All I did then was I just got the move tool and I just dragged and dropped that image across onto here and then I just did a control T just to resize that and maybe just give it a little bit of a rotation as well and then just pop it where I need it into place. And you'll see that's created a new layer called layer 5. So whenever you drag items across from one document window onto another you end up creating a brand new layer automatically here in Photoshop. And the key thing here is as well is that this is my currently active window. So it shows all the layers that are inside of this active document window. If I switch to make this the active window, you'll see that the layers panel changes to reflect what's currently in this active window. And like I said, whenever you open up an image or a new piece of paper, it automatically comes up as a background layer, which is locked. I'm just going to close that down so that we go back to this as our active window and then just talk about the different layers that we've got here. So one of the key things here is that the layers come up pre-named, layer 1, layer 5, layer 4. You can always name layers just by double clicking where it actually says the name of the layer and then giving it a name. So I could call this uh, Uluru Top as it's a view from the top of Uluru. So I'm just going to rename it so you can rename your layers that way. Uh, you can turn off the visibility of layers by just clicking on the eye icon next to the thumbnail here and that just switches off the visibility of that layer, just temporarily hides it and you can then just put it back on again by clicking there. You can also switch off all the layers by clicking and dragging over all the eyes and click and drag it back all over them and switch them all on again. So a neat little trick for turning them on and off in terms of your layers visibility. You'll also notice that in your layers panel window you'll see like a, a piece of paper here. You just about make out this image on that piece of paper. Where you see the grey and white checkerboard effect through here, it just simply means that this is transparent. So what that means is that it's completely see-through, which is why we can see the white background behind this image in this area, because it's transparent around this area, and just the area which is solid is the area that actually contains the image itself. Okay, one thing about uh, this view that we currently got here is that it's difficult to see the content on the layer and I don't really need to see all of the transparency. So I'm just going to go into my layers panel window. So this is the layers panel window here and you can open up this panel window by pressing F7 on your keyboard or you can go to the window menu and choosing the layers from there. So with this panel window I'm just going to go over to the panel options which is this little menu icon here. Come down to panel options and I'm going to make sure that the thumbnail size that is used here is not a small size but a medium so it makes them a bit larger and I just want to see the layer bounds so rather than seeing the whole document I just want to see what's the content on that document so I'm going to click OK and then it changes the view of my layers panel window and makes it much easier for me to identify what is on each piece of paper and what's on each layer Okay, currently this layer sits above this one, so this one's behind, and that's simply due to the stacking order of the layers that we have here in the layers panel window. So this layer here, look, sits above this one, so it will always appear above. If I grab this layer and drag it so it now sits above, you can see that this one now swaps around. So changing the order that your uh, images appear in terms of their stacking order, simply just rearranging your bits of paper within your layers panel window so that one sits above another and you do that just by dragging and dropping them around. You may want to duplicate a layer so you may want to have a second one of these images. You can do that by doing Control and J on your keyboard and that creates a second copy of that uh, layer that was currently active. So if I click over here I can drag it off and you can see that I've now got two copies of that layer. Alternatively you could have right mouse clicked and gone to duplicate layer here as well. So Control J is the keyboard shortcut. 
Now you can delete layers, in other words you can get rid of these images by just dragging them onto the trash can. You could also just press delete on your keyboard or you could right mouse click and choose delete layer as well. So that's how you can delete layers or duplicate layers. You have a background layer here at the moment which is locked. Uh, you can leave that locked, so there's no reason for us to unlock it at the moment, but if you ever did want to unlock a background layer which is locked, you hold down the Alt key and then you click on the actual uh, padlock icon here and then that layer becomes unlocked. You could also double click the uh, name of the layer and rename it and that will unlock it as well, but Alt key and click on the padlock symbol will do that. If you want to move two layers at the same time, so say I want to move this layer and this layer at the same time, then you can just select both of those layers by holding down the control key and that allows you to select the two layers. Uh, you can then link them using this little icon down here. Now that they're linked, if I move one, the other one will move at the same time. You can unlink them by highlighting them again and just pressing the link button. You can reduce the opacity of a layer just by using placing your mouse over the opacity uh, word and then using the slider just to slide it backwards and forwards to reduce the opacity. If you want to be more accurate, you can type directly in here and choose an opacity value as well. Okay, uh, one of the things as well is that at the moment, when I click on a layer, it's automatically selected here in the layers panel window. So if I click on this image, it automatically selects it and I can move it. If I click here, it automatically selects it and I can move it. Click here and it automatically selects the layer. That's because whilst you've got the move tool selected, I've got a tick here that says auto select. So if I don't have that tick on and I try and move this top layer here, see my mouse is on this image, it won't move it, it just moves this one. That's because this is the active layer, so it will only move and work on this particular layer. If I wanted to move this one, I'd have to come and select its layer, make it the active layer, and then I can move that layer. Well, if you've got hundreds of layers, that becomes a real pain trying to click on each one. So auto select means that you just click and Photoshop identifies the correct layer and selects it for you. So it's easy and quick for you to manipulate and move that particular item around or that layer around. Uh, there are other features available here in the layers panel window such as you can filter your layers again this is only useful if you had like 50 or 100 layers you could filter just to show the pixel based ones adjustment layers type layers or shape layers for example uh, you can also lock elements of your layer so you can prevent painting occurring on this particular image so if I click this icon here it locks that layer it means that if I were to get my paintbrush I can paint over all the other images but I cannot paint over this image because it's locked out. Uh, and you can lock the movement of an image or you can just throw a general lock which locks the whole lot out. I'm just going to click on that to unlock that. Okay, so that's just a very quick introduction to layers. In later videos we'll go on and we'll have a look at the blending modes that are available within layers and we'll also have a look at what some of these icons down here do as well. Just one final thing, if you want to create a blank layer then you can use this icon here to create a new layer. So all that does is it creates a, just a blank transparent piece of paper ready for me to paint on or to draw on or to add a gradient or a color fill to it but it creates a blank piece of paper. Over here you think well it's done nothing well it has done nothing because it's completely transparent as represented by these gray and white pixels.